Hello and welcome back to the Honest Business Podcast. I hope you are very well. Today we've got a fun episode. It's 10 business lessons that I wish I knew from the start. It'll be short and snappy, but I think helpful because we all want to know what we wish we knew however many years ago. And as I've kind of grown in business and I've moved through business, there are definitely some core things that I just wish I knew from the start because it would have helped me be a lot less kind of scared or I don't know I just would have got somewhere faster number one we have focus on nailing a couple of things not 10 this I think is such an important message this whole idea of just focusing on one thing even but I think sometimes you've got to focus on a couple of things while you're getting out the gate but like focusing on one thing and not trying to focus on being amazing at 10 things is one of the hardest things to do when you're starting a business because you have to kind of put your hat into loads of different arenas and you've got to constantly be managing loads of different pieces in the business. But in terms of like what you want to be known for, in terms of like who you are, nail that one thing or that couple of things really, really well. Don't try and go for 10 things because you don't need to. And actually when you are starting out, it's this beautiful, it's your chance to really get like super clear on something because it's much easier to expand outwards than it is to like have loads of stuff going on and then have to niche further in. Number two was most people are nice people. I think this is obvious, but it's really, you have to remember that because I think when you come into business, you think it's this like cutthroat thing that people, you see kind of versions of business displayed to you, like online, on movies, on kind of whatever you've experienced in your real life and kind of what you think business is, which for some people is like big buildings in London with suits and it's all very like serious and very intense and people are kind of, stabbing people in the back and it all feels very like oh and I think when I went into business I sort of had this immediate thing of everybody's horrible everybody's out to hurt you everybody doesn't want you to succeed like it's a real negative way of thinking and I'm just openly being honest with you because I know that there's other people who have said this to me in the past who also feel this and having to remember that most people are nice people most people do want you to win most people are gunning for you it's particularly in the business arena. So yes, there might be people in your personal life or outside of business who don't really get what you're doing or they don't really understand business. But people in business tend to be really supportive of one another. And it's really nice to see that. And it's your opportunity to kind of lean into that and really expand kind of the opportunity that is there because there's so many people willing to support you if you ask them at the right time for the right thing or you provide value to them in some way and then ask for something in return. Like there's a lot of people wanting to help you. Number three is you are much better than you think. And and then the second piece of this is really important. So the first piece is you are much better than you think you are. This was something I wish I had even further lent into. So when I started out in business, I already knew that I was really good at certain things. I knew I could do certain things. I knew I was really good at sales. I knew I was really good at various different pieces of business. So I already had like a confidence there. But what I wish I had knew was just to further believe and sit in that understanding and that core belief because actually that would have made it easier, sort of quicker. Um, And the second piece of that lesson is your potential is as big as you'll ever let yourself believe it is to be. And that in itself is so powerful to this day. I tell myself that all the time because it is so, so true. So your potential is as big as you'll let yourself believe that it can be. And the reason I say that is because I see potential in so many women who come to me and they talk to me and they talk about business or they come on clients or we have some kind of interaction. It doesn't matter how much I see potential in them if they have got no belief in that happening. I can tell them all the things I can see. I can say like, you know, I see this happening and this can happen and you are so capable of X, Y, and Z. And you're so, you know, if I spot something that's unique about them, I'm quite good at seeing what is their USP. If they do not believe that they are really good or they do not believe that they are at a certain point that they can get to a certain place, it won't happen. Like I can categorically say it won't. Now that's different from needing someone to believe in you when you don't believe in yourself and kind of going on that journey of growing into it. That's a different piece. But what I'm talking about is like, you are so much better than you think you are at whatever it is that you're trying to do. However, however much you believe in your potential will define what your potential is. 
like potential as a word, as a concept is meant to be this idea of, you know, well, what is your potential? And you might fulfill it and you might not. But one of the things I think is really important is that like, if you are not able to see the potential in yourself, I really struggle to see how you will be able to kind of meet it. And that is something I've seen proven to me time and time again. Like those people who have a vision, who are ambitious, who are like, I might not know all the answers. I've got a lot to learn. I need support, but I know I can do it. They will go so, so far. And they have that kind of audacity and that kind of hunger and that kind of desire to be like, right, let's do this. Like, I don't know what I don't know, but that's okay. I'm going to figure it out. And that attitude is like so true. So this idea of Yes, you are so much better than you think and believe it and act upon it and listen to your gut and like really stand up for yourself in that. But also your potential is only as big as you're going to let yourself believe that it is. And I think that's important because it adds responsibility for you to say, okay, well, I'm going to take this seriously and I'm going to actually do something here. Number four, in terms of business lessons that I wish I knew from the start is understanding that messaging will get you very far. This is something that if you want a golden ticket to grow in your business fast, for whatever reason, your messaging is the thing that you've got to figure out and you've got to get clear on and you've got to really refine and you've got to really like solidify. Understanding what your messaging is, primary, secondary, tertiary, what is the brand messaging? What is the product messaging? What is you as a business standing for? What is the values? How does the value translate into the messaging? Like understanding your messaging is like gold dust for making sure that your business goes far. And it's something that I think people kind of put off and they think, oh, you know, I'm just not gonna, I'm not gonna focus on that right now. But like, that is so, so important. Similarly to that, number five is around, you have to learn to display value and communicate it. Again, this is something people really struggle with. I think it's something you really struggle with if you're used to selling product and then you go to selling service. So for me, I think I've spoken about this before. I found that really hard. I found it excruciatingly hard. And it was really humbling because product, I can shift product. Like I love selling product. Like product, I love it. It's my kind of gold dust. It's where I enjoy. I just love it. And for those of you who are not sure of my story, I spent quite a few years in luxury beauty sales and I just love retail. I love the shop floor. I love helping women. I love seeing people's faces light up. I love like anything to do with that right beauty is such a fantastic industry but when you go from selling a product to a service especially when the service is yourself that is a road (laughs) it is a road it is a personal kind of endeavor it is very um I don't know what the word is like it brings up all sorts of things it is like holding a mirror up to yourself it is very tricky in my opinion and I know many clients have said the same to me To the point where like when I started having to sell myself as a service, I went back and I got support and I got coaching and I got like really held in spaces to be able to expand my sales skills and to be able to get better at that because it was such a stark difference. And I found it so odd. I found it really tricky to, to just you've got to get so like happy with yourself. You've got to get so much belief in yourself. You've got to really sit in what it is. Now, if you're selling a service where you aren't the service, so you're selling like, let's say you're in software sales or something, that I think is a lot easier. Like that's fine. It's a lot more like product stuff. But if you are someone, which a lot of you are, who are selling you as some kind of package, whether you're a consultant, an advisor, an agency, whether you are some sort of educator, whether you are someone who is pushing an idea and an ideology for people to buy into, it is a journey you go down. And so for me, this idea of learning to display value and communicate value in a way that is service specific is something that I wish I knew from the start in the sense of you just have to it's so nuanced and it's so sort of like depending on what your value set is and I think that's where the difference lies for me it was like I don't want to subscribe to a certain way of selling a service that is kind of the proven blueprint to it and I've definitely veered off and deviated in many ways but that has meant that I've had to really refine that ability which is kind of interesting as a lesson. Number six of business lessons that I wish I knew from the start, we have target audience is king. Know them really well. So with this one, I think what I really mean here is that 
if you want to catapult your business, like let's say you're starting a new business or you've just taken over a new business or you've bought a new business, like this idea of I've got to understand my target audience, but you've got to understand them on a micro level. I'm not really talking about the grandness of the demographics, who they are, what they do, that sort of thing. I'm talking about like, how do you get into the skin of your target audience and really understand and who they exist in the world of people? Not as business people, not as whatever their role is, not whatever you're selling them to. I want to know like who they are as an individual. And I think that is something that, again, it's not taught at business school. Um, it's not taught in kind of, traditional business education books classes that sort of thing but this real kind of next level understanding of who is your target audience and then understanding what you're doing with that information because sometimes people come to me and they've got really strong target audience work done you know they've got profiling they've got various different things that they can show me and they've built out and that they know and they can communicate with me but what there's often this gap of is What are you doing with that information? And that's where I like to really help people to think, what are we going to do that? And how are we going to, how does that impact every single decision you make in terms of your marketing strategy and your sales process and your sales system? And that is something that you have to, have to really focus on to get to a point where your marketing and sales is working for you and it is working for you in a big way. And one of the ways you do that is through your target audience understanding. Number seven is an important one. And it's a one that I think people find out the hard way. It's a one that people sort of say to themselves before they start a business that they're not going to let happen to them. But then somehow along the line, it, it does. So number seven is don't let people disrespect you, which is one piece of the pie (laughs) do not let people disrespect you and this is so important like regardless of who you have to interact with in your business whoever your stakeholders are whoever you are in your industry with whoever you trade business with and you do business with like do not let people disrespect you I don't care how old you are I don't care how long you've been in business I don't care anything you want to say do not let people disrespect you there is no reason for it to there's no need for anybody to it is unacceptable in any way like do not let people disrespect you and i think we've we've all had this okay it, i struggle to meet a business owner who doesn't say actually yeah at some point i did let somebody walk all over me or i did let this happen or this situation happened and it really didn't feel great to me do not let people disrespect you and the second part of that is you've got to let go and move on or you get dragged and this is <laughs> a hard one okay I think this is something that all of us constantly have come back to at various different points and cycles on our journey okay if you have an instance that derails you if you have something that hasn't felt good in your business if you have something happen where you're like that was really shitty or that didn't feel good or you were wronged or you're like oh or even if there's two ways to it you know even if you're actually like yeah we made a mistake here or this kind of we dropped the ball a bit and this person's unhappy and this person's pissed off once you've sorted that immediate situation and you've had your moment to kind of wallow and reflect and gather learnings, you have to let go and move on or you will be dragged. And when I say be dragged, what I mean is, is that like, it just follows you around. It follows you around, it haunts you, it feeds into things, it eats into you. We can see this time and time again. It's often an unconscious thing. It's just sort of like ruminating and sitting there and you have to get into a position where you have to say, okay, I'm going to let go of this and I'm going to move on because the opposite is to be dragged by it. And that thing is not worth my time or energy. And something I have to say is and something I often look at myself if this ever happens, which I'm lucky, it very rarely happens to me, but it still does happen in business. Like, I don't think it's some people will say to you like, oh, nothing bad ever happens to me anymore. And I'm this like amazing business owner and I've been in business for so long. And I'm like, really, though, like, are you, are you, though? Because I know what's actually happening a lot of the time. And, and I think most people regardless of the size of the business you're building people have things that come up that just don't feel good so when you are like okay I'm gonna let go and I'm gonna move on and I am not gonna allow this to be dragged because why can that person I'm not working for that person this is something that comes up for me I bring this up a lot so if you have a situation where let's just say what could we example 
let's just say that somebody is saying something about you that doesn't feel fair. Yeah, that's something that I think a lot of people talk about. They're like, oh, so and so said this, or somebody's come back to me and said, oh, this has happened. And you feel hurt because you're like, that is not okay. Like, that's not true. That's not fair. That's not the whole story. This is their part in it. Like, all the kind of things that come up. You then have to come back to, why am I working so hard for this person? If that situation sits in your mind, sits in, eats away at you, is kind of like, just like here, and it's this anxious energy, you have to turn around and go, okay, how many hours this week have I worked for that person? In the sense of how many hours of your energy, of your precious time and energy has gone into thinking about that, dealing with that, kind of ruminating in that. And then you just put a time, you put a money tree value on it. So whatever your hourly rate is in your business, which again, if you listen, you know I'm not talking about an hourly rate as in how much you charge people. I'm talking about, in my world, people kind of define an hourly rate somehow that is a rough hourly rate in the business for all the hours that they work. Put an hourly rate on that. Be dragged by it. Like, what what's it going to be? Like, how much is it? And then you start really like reckoning with yourself and you're like, well, hang on a minute. No, this is stopped. Like, I'm not getting dragged. I'm not working for free. I'm not letting this thing take over precious time that could have been put into X, Y, and Z thing. So you let go and you move on. And I hope, I know I've spent a while on that, but I, I hope it helps people because this sort of thing can eat people away and it eats all of us away. I think, especially if you love what you do and you're really passionate about it and you want to do good work in the world, sometimes this stuff really derails you. Moving on from that, number eight, which is a real kind of similar one, well, it's linked, is emotional intelligence is at the core of everything. I cannot tell you how much truth there is in this, in all of life, to be honest. I walk around life and I'm just like, emotional intelligence, emotional intelligence, emotional intelligence, like, it's just constant, okay? Emotional intelligence is at the core of everything that you do and it's at the core of everything you're going to experience. Every interaction you have, every win you have, every loss you have, every kind of mundane thing that you do, like emotional intelligence is sitting across things at all points. And one thing that I wish I knew from the start was the relevance of it and how sort of prominent it was, like how it was just constantly there. Because if you know that, you can then make it work in your favor. And I have this where now the situation just work in my favor because I know, I know what's at play. Before I even go into a situation, whether it's unknown or known to me, I know, okay, well, intel emotional intelligence is, is playing here for every single human being in this room. Whether that's two of us together or whether that's like 400 people on a stage. Emotional intelligence is at play here. Depending on what this is gonna, how this is gonna play out is gonna depend on what everybody's emotional intelligence is, where they're at right now, how their mood is, and how they can therefore move forward with whatever they're about to, how we're gonna interact. And once you figure that out, and once you start understanding that, and once you can start seeing that in people, and you can start identifying it, it changes your life. It begins to just free you up so much. The kind of imposter syndrome goes, the worry goes, the like, oh, is this gonna happen? Is this gonna happen? Like, It all just kind of goes because you start to think, right, okay, focus on myself, focus on the situation, I'm gonna just do a really great job. Whatever else happens from that, is always then a reflection point of yes for you to look but also for most of the time it's a reflection point of the other people in the room or the other people in a situation and so you always come back to okay what is my emotional intelligence telling me where have I not got the strength that I need to but then what does it mean for other people and you have to do that because you cannot internalize everything. If you start internalizing everything in business, you will be a very unhappy person very quickly. And you will also probably be not very a successful business person very quickly because if internalization is kind of like the fast road to destruction and to self-destruction and to unhappiness and to kind of this ever evolving beast that just is to tear yourself down. Don't do it. Study emotional intelligence, understand it, work on it, build your own. If you build your own emotional intelligence, you will learn more about it than trying to read it in a book, in my opinion. Like, once you start building it, it becomes a lot easier for you to sort of facilitate it in others and to see it in others and to understand where other people are. It's such a powerful tool. Number nine on the 10 business lessons that I wish I'd knew from the start. I hope you're enjoying this episode. I know it's a bit of a different one. But there should be some nuggets in here that you take away. And maybe it's just like a couple of words, but it's just like, yes, ping, that's what I needed today. And I'm going to go on my jolly way and keep going with my 
sort of business journey and attack it with the intention and the desire that is aligned with the goals that you're working towards at the moment. Number nine is learn to sell. <laughs> learn to sell and you'll be okay for the rest of your life. I, this is like one of my mantras in life. It's one of my mantras in life. It's what I believe in. I believe it should be in curriculums. I believe it should be taught across the world. Sales is a skill. It is a skill that is so critically important. Sales is negotiation. Sales is communication. Sales is being able to hold spaces and be able to hold situations. Like when I say learn to sell and you'll always be okay, that's not me just saying like, oh, so that you can always make money and that you'll never not have any money. That's not what I mean. Yes, that can be great. But what I also mean is like people who can sell can hold situations and get themselves out of situations. Like, for example, God forbid, let's hope this never happens. But if I'm abducted or kidnapped or some kind of horrific situation like that, I would probably have a good go of getting out of it with the gift of the gab in the sense of you just start manipulating and when you, when you're very good at sales, I'm not saying you just, like, when you start becoming very good at sales, you understand negotiation. You also understand emotional intelligence. You also understand how do people's behaviors interact with what they're saying versus what they actually mean and what they believe. And you can study human behavior. You can study body language and you can also study manipulation. And whilst I'm not saying that you need to learn to sell so that you can manipulate people, that's not what I'm saying at all. What I am saying is that sales builds a confidence in you and builds an understanding and a belief in yourself that you know that you can stand up to people that are trying to scare you or trying to purposely kind of kill you or something. So that's kind of detoured, I know, quite quickly into something a bit morbid. However, I truly, truly believe that if you learn to sell, you'll be okay. Like, you will find a solution. You will make something happen. You can talk to people in a way that most people just cannot talk or would never have the courage to. Sales makes you very bold. Sales makes you able to say the stuff that you're thinking in your head, but you're terrified of saying. And there is nothing wrong with that, okay? Just want to put this out there though. I am not suggesting you go around manipulating people. I'm not suggesting that you start learning how to manipulate people for sales. You do not have to learn manipulation to be a good salesperson. I am just saying that you will naturally be able to see how your words impact other people's behavior and what that party means between one another, the dance between one another. And the other thing on that is like, learn to love it learn to sell you'll always be okay but also learn to love it because sales is such a fun skill it's such a joyful thing like my sales skills allows other people to see potential in themselves that they would never ever see my sales skills allows people to open up honestly to themselves in a way that other communication styles maybe just never would have done my sales skills allows people to say yes to themselves and their growth and their dreams in a way that if we hadn't had that conversation, they just carry on on their merry way. And I know that I sound like a bit of a broken record when I talk about what the power of sales is, but I, I truly have seen it to my core. I truly understand it, whether you're selling a service or whether you're selling a product. Like, let's just take a product, for example. I used to sell um, premium beauty products. You can see in an instant, if you have a conversation with someone, I used to sort of, if you'd apply a cream to someone's face for them to try, you can see in milliseconds the shift in the body language, the change, the kind of relief, the removal of stress. Like you can see so much happening to them in a short space of time. And you, you know, I used to have people who literally have like 15 seconds of sort of touching them or, you know, like putting something on them or applying something. And they're just a different person. Like it's not about what it is you're selling. It's not about the product, it's not about the service. It's about there's an interaction that happens. And when you learn for that to happen, that's how you can create transformation in people. And it is so powerful because you can use that in all parts of your life. All parts of your life. It's, it's so, so important. Number 10, we're on to the final one. Although I have got a bonus one, which I hope you'll take from me. So we might end up with 11. But number 10, this is another good one. and something that a lot of you will resonate with and as a lot of you are experiencing right now or have been through. And that is... All the bad stuff that happens to you and the things that you are insecure about will turn out to help you. And they can be a point of differentiation. So lean into them. I know it was a big one. Let's go through it again, okay? All the bad stuff that happens to you and all the things that you're insecure about will turn out to help you and can be a point of differentiation. So lean into them. 
Now, this isn't some kind of toxic positivity. I'm not saying that you've had some horrific thing happen in your life and therefore you should be really happy and you should be like, woohoo, isn't this amazing? I'm so great and blah, blah, blah. That's not what I'm saying. What I am trying to relate to you is if you have had some horrifically painful things happen to you in your life and you have to constantly pull yourself up every single day and move forward and move on and keep going at something and it feels like the world has fallen down around you, the things that you are going through and the things that you are having to learn about yourself and other people and how you manage a situation like that will make you a better business owner for the rest of your life and will allow you to be able to talk to people in a certain way, have empathy in a certain way, communicate in a certain way that other people just are not able to do. And I am I really want to make it clear, I'm not trying to suggest that all the things that are happening to you are good, but I am saying that they do help you. They, turn, they help you and they often become a point of differentiation for people to be able to connect with you and say, that's my person. I want to work with that business. I want to work with her because she understands me. She's real. She understands what it's like to struggle. She understands what pain I'm in. And the reason I've put this on this list is because this for me is like one of the most kind of close to the bone things. I felt like when I started a business that from the beginning, I had to be this like, invincible person almost I, I felt like you know oh we can't have insecurities we can't have things that are bad happening to you you can't have this thing and that thing because everybody's these robots and it comes back to what I said at the beginning about representation what you see what you believe businesses I believed you know I went to business school I worked I saw all these things I consulted I was like but I had this vision of what business was and then I started a business and I started a second business and I just was like oh cool, like I can just decide what business is going to be for me. And there's a whole community of other cool people doing their own version of business. And it's one of the reasons why I am so dedicated to showing up, you know, mainly on Instagram stories and showing people every day kind of reality and what's going on. And whilst I don't, you know, share necessarily the whole ins and outs of my life, I try really hard to say, you know, like, I'm having a bit of a bad day or I'm really struggling with grief or I'm really struggling with my mental health. Or I'm really struggling with this, like, Try and be really open because we've got to see that representation there. Otherwise, you're never going to believe that point that I'm trying to sell to you. You know, <laughs> this idea that bad things are going to happen to you and that you can be insecure about them. Like, there's so much rhetoric around don't be insecure and you've got to fix all your insecurities. Well, yeah, it's great if you can do that. But I always believe that everybody somewhere at, at any one time has always got an insecurity. We're all insecure about other things. But list them out, you know, like write all those things. What's the bad stuff that's happened to you? What are you insecure about? Have you lost someone? Are you, you know, have you got a chronic illness? What's your age? Do you feel insecure about your age? Like that was for me, it was a huge one, you know, um, being young, starting out in business, that was a huge insecurity for me. And that took a long time for me to not feel, partly because of ages and partly because of things that I'd experienced. But like, I then realized that that was a differentiation point for me. That was an absolute joy. That was like a thing to celebrate. It was something that people wanted to work with me for. You know, it was a reason why that if you've got a boardroom of all white middle-class males who are in their 50s or 60s, like why having someone young who isn't that is hugely beneficial. Like that's a reason for people to say, yes, I want you on my board or I want to do this. So like really take time to value kind of what, these things that you're experiencing in your life help you to develop as as an individual. It's not about you having to create a marketing campaign saying, this used to be me and I really struggled and now I'm this person and look at how amazing I am. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is like the depth you build inside yourself, the understanding you have as a human being, that catapults you forward. It catapults wisdom in you. And wisdom is something as a business owner, you can't really buy, but you want people do buy, you know, people will build boards if you're building a startup and they're buying wisdom because they need it because maybe the founder doesn't have it. And you've got that gift of that wisdom. And I can see that, you know, there's so many people in my world to I sort of attract where everyone's got a story. Everyone's got something that's happened to them. It's very rare that someone comes to me and hasn't got something that's happened to them in their life, whether that's they're going through it right now or whether they um, have experienced something in the past. But you can really tell a difference with people who really understand the depths of despair the depths of like struggle the depths of like worry and panic and upset and unknown fear and really challenging times that has had to get them to build grit and determination and resilience and has really had to get them to find who they are as a person 
And that is a gift to you. Like, use it. Utilize it. Don't hide it away. Don't feel like you've got to pretend that it never happened. Don't be kind of um, ashamed of it. Like, it's okay for you to own it and to utilize it. And it can be, for some of you, where appropriate, a point of differentiation that often lots of people are trying to search for. So lean into that because it's really important. And when I started doing that, things really changed for me. Like, things became a lot easier because I felt like, oh, okay, I'm I'm really myself here. And I, I feel validated in the sense of like I'm okay and what also was cool is when I started to do that when I showed up online people then also felt validated themselves and it was kind of like a ripple effect because now I know that my behavior enables others to do similar I know that my kind of constant showing up inspires other people to show up or I know that it helps them to say yes actually I can see her doing that let's let's try that myself and that's really important so those are my 10 business lessons I wish I knew from the start I have got a another one a cheeky one a bonus one that I think is a good one it's a positive one okay so my final one is it's only four words <laughs> and it is it's not that hard I wish I knew from the start the business is not that hard now I know some of you are gonna say hey, it's really hard it's really 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 hard I went into business thinking it was impossible I went into business thinking these people that you see online, that you look up to, that you vision as a businesswoman or a businessman, it's just impossible. It will never happen for me. I come from this background, this thing. I don't have this. I don't have that. I can't do this. You know, I don't have anyone to help me with X, Y, Z. Like, I thought it was impossible. I thought, oh my goodness, I can't do this. And I just wish that I had known that's not that hard. People don't, most of the time, have no clue what they're doing. People are presenting as one thing in reality or another. People have marketing and campaigns that make them look one thing and actually the reality underneath it is totally different. I just wish I knew it wasn't actually that hard because it's not. If you have a solid strategy and you have a clear understanding of where you're getting to and you understand what you need to do, business is not that hard. I'm not also saying it's easy because it's not easy, but it is simple. And it just doesn't have to be as hard as I think people make it. Like business does not have to be the hardest thing in your life. In fact, I would argue there are a whole list of things that are harder in my life every single day than business. And I granted, I understand that part of that is I have a very beautiful gift and I am very apt in business and I understand business and business does come naturally to me. But I also know that for many other people, there will also, once they have got into a rhythm that makes sense to them, once they have support, you know, say like me, that really supports them to grow as business people and they know they've always got someone to fall back to, it's actually not that hard. It doesn't take a lot of effort, yes. Does it take a lot of pain? Yes. Does it take a lot of sacrifice sometimes? Yeah. Like, does it, I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm just saying, like, I think we really scare people to not start a business because they think it's impossible. And you see these videos where people are like, start a business and you're never gonna have days off and you're never gonna have Christmas day and all this. And it's like, Jesus Christ, like, just chill out. We need the 431 method. We need to come and see Mary James. We need to just chill. You can have a week off every month if you want to. Like, that is not business, right? The representation we get given and we see on social all day long and the getting up at 5 a.m. and all the other bullshit that goes on, like, that is not business. It doesn't have to be business. And so for me, like, I just wish I knew from the start it wasn't that hard. Like, you will be able to have the most expensive, expansive life and joyful life and have so much freedom whilst building it. I think a lot of people think you've got to build the business and then you sell it and then you exit it and then that's when you have a good time. It doesn't have to be the case. Lots of people are never selling a business. Lots of them are not building the business to exit. They're existing in their business today and they're having the time of their life doing so. And I just wish there was more representation, which is part of why I'm so committed to my kind of mission and my vision of what I do at May James, of why I'm, you know, share things. And we try and kind of blend this whole life and lifestyle and business together because I needed to see that. And there's many other women around the world that needs to see it. And there's many men who need to see it and everybody needs to see it. But it's not that hard. Like you can do it. If you're prepared to work hard, you've got to work hard 100% but it is not that hard in the sense of it's not impossible. 
Those are my 11 business lessons that I wish I knew from the start. I have so enjoyed having this conversation with you. I hope you've taken something away from that. Please come and share with me what your business lessons are. Like, what do you wish you knew from the start? I would love to know. Feel free to tag me on Instagram if you're going to do like a story maybe or send me a message in a DM. I'm at may.james underscore. If you've enjoyed this episode, I'd really request for you to leave a review if possible. Give me five stars if you want or give me one if you think it's shit. But <laughs> please leave a review. It's, it helps things. I don't really understand, but it helps things. Um, and I will see you in the next episode. Take care. Bye.